Bonsai is the brutal torture of plants. And in fact, the smell of cut grass is essentially just them screaming. And my favorite, never like bonsai, is the plant equivalent of foot binding. Thank you, finally someone with logic. Now, after reading the comments of my biology of bonsai video, it became clear to me that there's a lot of confusion about plants and pain, especially when these people are citing articles that prove plants scream in agony. So by the end of this video, you'll know why plants didn't evolve pain and can decide for yourself if practicing bonsai is sadistic. <laughs> But first, we explore pain. Pain evolved to serve two purposes. One, an alarm to tell us something is wrong and needs to be changed. And two, as an educational tool to increase survivability. If we can react to damage and learn from it, we increase our chances of survival. Now you see, pain is different from feeling. Feeling is the exploration of quality texture, shape, and temperature. For instance, I can tell this fire feels warm, which is temperature. But if I begin to hover my hand over the fire, it begins to hurt. Feeling turns into pain at the point of potential damage. Ah. Our brain is able to differentiate the two via receptors. In simple terms, our non-pain senses are felt by sensory receptors and pain is felt through pain receptors. These are two completely different pathways, so it's possible for an organism to have senses, but no pain. But who can feel pain? There are five criteria that can tell us. Number one, they need to have pain receptors. Number two, they need a complex enough nervous system to interpret pain. Now, given just those two criteria, we can confidently say that all vertebrates feel pain. That's mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, and yes, even fish. This next one isn't as intuitive, but it's a good indicator. And that's number three, is if they are long lived. The longer you live, the more chances you have of dying. Experiencing pain allows you to make better decisions that help you live longer. However, this isn't the case for short-lived organisms. Flies didn't evolve pain because they don't live long enough to reap its benefits. Therefore, the shorter you live, the less likely you feel pain. Number four, they can quickly react to prevent tissue damage. This process is called nociception, which is an automatic reflex to damage. Although nociception alone can't determine if an animal feels pain, it can be a good indicator. And number five, they can learn to prevent future damage. Octopuses and crabs most likely feel pain. They have complex nervous systems, live long, and studies have shown they react to and remember painful experiences. So what does this mean for plants? Well, they don't have pain receptors and they don't have a complex nervous system. So right away, that's a huge red flag. They probably don't feel pain. Plants can live a long time, which could support the need to evolve pain. Plants can react to tissue damage and in some cases prevent its continuation, specifically from predation from insects. For instance, certain plants can release gaseous compounds that attract both parasitic and predatory insects that attack herbivorous bugs. Now it makes sense that plants evolved responses to predation, but what about physical trauma? Now if I cut this pine tree with an ax, eventually sap will fill this wound, which is a passive reaction. There are sacks of resin just underneath the bark, ready to plug up any cut that comes its way. The thing is, this pine can't stop me from swinging my ax again. It can only react to damage. It can't prevent it. And this is the biggest red flag. Plants can't move. Unlike animals, a plant can't swat an insect that's eating them, or run away from a forest fire, or move to a new location if there isn't enough water. Plants are at the mercy of their environment. This should be enough to understand that it wouldn't be beneficial for plants to have evolved pain in the first place. How would pain even help a plant? What a cruel world it would be if all plants could do is sit in agony while being eaten by deer, having their limbs chopped off by a falling tree, or being burnt alive in a forest fire. Pain benefits those who can learn. But why would people think plants feel pain in the first place? Humans are a caring species. However, when it comes to bonsai, people often project their own discomforts onto the tree, imagining the senses of wires, cutting, and starvation. This tendency to attribute human-like qualities to non-human objects is called anthropomorphism. As researcher Patricia Ghana stated, anthropomorphism can lead to an inaccurate understanding of biological processes in the natural world. 
It's nearly impossible to understand the experience of another organism because we only understand what it's like to be human, which is why anthropomorphism should be avoided, especially in scientific terms. Unfortunately, anthropomorphism in poorly written science articles only add to the confusion. By far the most popular article used as proof of plant torture is titled, Plants May Let Out Ultrasonic Squeals When Stressed. This article refers to a research paper where scientists found that certain plants produce ultrasonic vibrations when cut or dehydrated. The cool thing is that these findings can potentially help farmers identify when their crops are in need of water. However, nowhere in the paper does it suggest that plants feel pain or scream. Yet the journalists of the sensationalized article use words like vocalizer agony and stress-induced screaming. Why anthropomorphize? because squeals get clicks. Science writing is supposed to be clear and factual, otherwise it just confuses the general public. So what's my take on everything? It's a bit complicated. Do plants feel pain? No, they don't. But the truth is, science is always updating. Up until a few years ago, scientists were convinced fish couldn't feel pain, and now look at us. So later down the line, if we find out plants have their own version of sensation, I'll be open to it. But for now, I don't think it's something we need to worry about. However, what actually concerns me is how disconnected we are from nature. As humans become more modern, our relationship with the natural world becomes more estranged, which leads to a lack of unity between us, the land, and the life on it. Nowadays, it feels like we only value life if it provides some kind of benefit to us. And I think that's the main gripe for the bonsai's torture people, that they see bonsai as a selfish act that only benefits the artist. I'm all for respecting plants, but I believe it's up to the individual to choose how they want to show it. At the end of the day, bonsai is a way for people to connect with nature. Just like hunters understand deer more than non-hunters, bonsai artists understand trees more than we can comprehend. Bonsai trees are deeply cared for. Probably the oldest tree in the nursery. And have the potential to live hundreds of years. If bonsai doesn't jive with you, that's fine. You don't have to do it. But is bonsai torture? No. You can't torture something that doesn't feel pain. There is nothing done to a bonsai that it wouldn't encounter out in the wild. Plants are masters of adaptation. Being a mobile forest trees to reach the tallest heights, make fire resistant bark, and have antifreeze for sap, Plants are tough, they can take it. They've survived everything from asteroids to ice ages and will continue to do so long after we're gone. Thanks for watching this video, and if you like this content, know that I'm working on a plant intelligence and sentience video next, and that's gonna be my next big science video. So, 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 that, so subscribe if you haven't already. And if you didn't know, I produce all these videos myself. I do the animations, I taught myself to edit, I do all the filming, uh, the research, and that's why these videos take so long. And hopefully, eventually, I could afford a editor, uh, and that's why I have a Patreon. So if you want to support me, eventually, I'll be able to get an editor and hopefully bust out a video a week. Right now, that seems like so out of the, the, like, the realm of possibility right now. My goal is to post two videos a month, uh, and even that's kind of hard for me. So if you want to support my channel, go check out my Patreon link. Descri uh, the link's in the description, and I'll put the link right here. But uh, thanks for watching.